Hello, what's up? Welcome. Um, today I'm working on these cool PDF maps, actually. This has been really fun. Like checking out the whole world from this eagle eye view. There's still some issues, you know, like these lily pads aren't getting covered up right there. This weird line here. But anyway, this is kind of exciting to see the world from this perspective. This is World Seed Wizard, the overworld for it. This is a giant document. It's like 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. So that it could be printed out. Um, I'm thinking of doing like some posters or cloth maps or something really interesting. But also there's the what was promised to the Kickstarter backers was a PDF map of one world. So I'm going to be working on which world that should be and creating a PDF map and stuff like that. So this is kind of the first step, um, writing the code basically that prints all this out. So this is the code. It's part of what's called overworld layer right now. Um, and there's a lot of improvements I need to do. Um, right now it just spits out um, two rendered textures per Z level. So there's like the bottom ground and then there's the what goes on top of the ground. And then you put those two together to create the map as it is right now. And like here's also for some dungeons. Here's like, this is dungeon one. And there's also some issues with the dungeons. I don't know why, but some of the areas aren't drawing. So there's issues. I got to get it all working. But um, it's really actually almost finished at this point. So, um, but what I do need to do is get it to draw correctly. There's an issue sometimes where it won't draw. Um, it'll draw one of the layers on top of, of another layer. So that's what I'm gonna start with. So it's gonna be mostly programming, get improving this, um, the output of this. Oh, also it, it outputs, let's see if it's will draw it. It also outputs a layer with all the items. And that layer needs to become a render texture so that, let's see if it's gonna work. Ah, oh, it worked on the first try this time. So what's weird about this is one of the issues is sometimes it draws the ground on top of the other stuff. I have no idea why, but it's some Z issue with render textures. I'm not quite aware of how it's, so I have to, I have to fix that too. That's the first thing to do. But you can see it looks pretty cool with all the items. Like it shows you, okay, there's dungeon two. You're gonna get the ghost sword and the teleporter there. There's dungeon one in the middle. You're gonna get the bombs and your blink. There it's rendering this out to disk now. Okay, so task number one is I'm gonna get it drawing correctly so this all looks cool. Um, so it doesn't fail sometimes. And then um, start working on getting the items all ex exported as well. Arcane, yeah, that's what I'm working on, a PDF map generator. So, um, yeah, the code's coming along for it pretty well. I'm going to call this Mapper. Actually, I should start doing that right now. I'm going to create a namespace for this. Right now, it's just all loose in this one file. So I'm going to create a namespace for the, this and keep it organized. Because there's static variables and everything. Man, this is a long... How you been, man? What's new? You been playing any games? All right, before I go and put everything in it, Actually, I should start putting things in it. Yeah, hopefully this is pretty fun. Like, this is going to be important to um, to the backers, of course, to fulfill the promise. But also, think, ow. think of how cool this will be for speedrunners. Like, um, you'll need, so that's why, you know, I had these one worlds. Oh, did I get rid of them? Anyways, I had some printouts of a world 
But yeah, speedrunners will find this really, really fascinating. You'd be like, okay, here's the fastest route through this world and through all these dungeons, and here's how I can get that those items and whatnot. You're looking for a job and you're playing games? Cool. Yeah, Songbringer's coming really well. Getting close to the finish line here. And, um, well, they'll, they'll be, you know, the game will be released this summer, at the end of this summer, but um, it really won't be finished until, like, you know, the new year almost. Because there's updates after that. So there'll be some updates to get done on Songbringer and added features too. There's some planned things. So yeah, I hope it goes well. I hope the release goes well. It'd be nice to know that um, I have enough money to be able to make the next game. And if Songbringer does well, I'd love to be able to hire someone to help me out um, with either programming or art. I'm not sure. But that would be really cool too, to just like have a little bit of help make the game a little bit, the next game a little bit uh, either faster or just deeper, you know, have more more content. You can make more with, with more people. <clears throat> oh, you haven't sent out your CVs yet? Nice, good, yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, it's almost finished. There won't be any spoilers on this stream, I don't think. Okay, so the render textures, I'm gonna start putting those in. Well, let me try an idea here. It's in render area. If I throw, if I put the render textures, um, I don't think this actually works. So if we go to, this is where it adds all the current nodes, fill the render textures with the current area. Here it is. Oh, so for each texture, it does a render. Okay, let's make sure that the render texture before it starts has a global Z order of zero. And then afterwards, I'll set the Z order here. I think this might fix the problem where it's drawing the ground on top of the other stuff. All right, let's try that. So before it renders, it uses a Z order of zero. Okay, that definitely didn't work. It was, this is this is what happens when the bug happens. Like, it doesn't draw. It draws the ground on top of everything else. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, what I'm gonna try now is using a sprite instead, which means that I want all of these. Let's do this node sort and the render textures and the number of textures. I'm going to put all this up in the uh, namespace. Oh man. There we go.
Actually, this sorted sorted node class can be yeah, this could be it. Like shared. I think I use the sorted vec2 class. Here we go. What's up, Cash It? Uh, no, it'll be both. It'll be both bitmaps and PDFs. I just call it a PDF um, because a PDF is just something it'll be compiled and it'll be easier to look at on your iPad or something like that. You know, like if you're playing, let's say you're playing Song Ringer on the couch, you're having a good time, you got your controller and everything, you might have like your iPad next to you. So if you want to, or your phone or whatever. And that way you can just look up the PDF and it'll have all the, the Z levels. So like this will have Z level zero. This is the, the overworld. And it'll also have Z level one. You know, like this is the first dungeon. It'll have all these in the PDF map together. So it's just a little bit easier to keep it together that way. But yes, it could also be just a bitmap, a giant bitmap. What's interesting is these are actual, these are actually to scale. This is how big everything actually is in Songbringer. It's about 400 by 200 pixels. So this is a pretty, this would be a pretty high quality map actually. Okay, so sorted node's gonna get shared now. <clears throat> I guess we could have an ID as well. Okay, instead of calling this Z, I'm going to call this sort. Ah, that's good enough. All right, so both these need to get created in kit, get this compiling. I hope I didn't have something else named sorted, some sorted node. Oops, this is supposed to be sort. Actually, now that I, I just changed my mind, I want the node to be first, the sort to be second. That seems to make a little more sense. Yeah, this is really fun. It's actually been a really, really fun thing to, to develop. And um, it's kind of interesting because the, uh, the output is really neat, right? You get these huge bitmaps of the whole world. But also the, the, uh, the animation of it happening, like when I run this, this map generator thing, it draws area one and then two and then three all with the items and everything like that. It's cool to see it. You can record that output and it becomes like an animation like like this was the other day I did this one. 
It's kind of big, so it takes a sec to load. <laughs> An error occurred with the preview of this document. I've never seen that before. Wow, I can't even play that GIF right now. I don't know why. Might be because I'm streaming and compiling. I don't know. Well, it's yeah, it's kind of cool to see them animated though. All right, so sorted node starts with node. This one is just a uh, sort. No, no, no. This is not something anyone will ever have access to. It's just a private thing as, as a developer for myself to generate maps and share certain maps. So um, the point is, like, some of these maps will be a little more secret, kind of like Nintendo Power y. Remember how Nintendo Power, they gave you. Um, like they didn't give you certain regions or whatever, so like you might have like all of this part of the map like just, you know, grayed out or something like that. And it doesn't show all the items and stuff like that. So some of the maps will be like that where it's where it kind of like still leaves a lot for you to explore, but it gives you sort of an idea of what that world is like. Um, and then some of the maps will be complete like it'll show you every single item everything everywhere it is because that way you can get a hundred percent on the map and the items and all that easier so um being that it's kind of like an in-house tool i can choose which worlds to do that for and let this out to the public as you know as needed and some of these like i'll maybe try and leak out and just keep it totally secret and then some of them will be like, it'll be official, like here's totally the map for the world, whatever, Xera. That's kind of the idea behind it. Yeah, right, so there will be, yeah, so the game will be shipped with a one PDF map. And that's the one I'm talking about that will be like, it'll have some stuff grayed out. It won't, it won't have, it won't show you everything, but it'll give you a good start. And that way, you know, there's just one world where people can kind of like, you know, have a little bit of guidance. They have, you have the Nintendo power. Yeah, some of the maps won't be. So some of the maps, some of the maps will be for beginners and some of the maps will be for speedrunners. The ones for speedrunners will be complete. They'll have everything on them, all the items. And the ones for beginners that just want to explore won't have everything. Yeah, that would be cool too. So that could go on the wiki or, um, or whatever. Songbringer does have a wiki already. I think it's songbringer.wiki. Wikia? Is that it? It's on songbringer.com. But yeah, I think the wiki, this, the, I'll probably put at least one map here on the wiki. Oh, it's songbringer.gamepedia.com. Can you get at it like that? Yeah, songbringer.gamepedia.com. That works. So yeah, the the awesome people at uh, Gamepedia and Curse, that's it, Curse makes these guys. Yeah, um, they started this off, they kicked it all off, this wiki, so I'm kind of excited to see how that goes. Okay, what did I do? Did I forget to close this up? Sorted node, sorted node, and and sort. Oh, and I just didn't do it. Oh, what?
doesn't did I name it node? Oh, I just named it node. All right, okay, so now I'm in the process of converting all this here. All right, <clears throat> cool, so I got sorted node is now something that can be shared amongst all the song reader code, so I can sort nodes. And now we got textures, end textures, mapper. Oh, so render area needs to be a method of mapper. And then the call to render area needs to be prefixed with mapper. Okay, so I'm organizing this into a namespace, so it's just really easy to put the variables that it uses. Like it's got a render texture and all this stuff that I don't want to put in the header because it's super annoying to change a header and then have to recompile everything. And it's all this belongs in one CPP file, anyways. So it's really handy to just use a namespace for storing stuff like that so it doesn't collide with anything else. Sort of, oh, sort of nodes a little different. So we're creating it with that and then ZZ. Okay, that should be it. Nice, oh, I'm glad this worked. So now the render textures are basically inside that namespace variable. They're static, but they're up in that namespace. So I think they should actually be static. So, okay, still we have the bug. I need to mix it, basically fix this so that the ground textures aren't drawn on top of the other stuff sometimes. It's so weird. Sometimes it, wor it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's got to be, a, I think it's a, just a Z order issue, but for some reason, Coco Studio X's render texture is not drawing its it's not drawing the um sometimes it just doesn't draw them right even if I specify the right Z order so oh yeah so also I want to do yeah I might as well just do this render texture the textures will be separate from that. Okay, and then we got nodes. and sprites to render them. Let's call this text sprites just to keep it a little bit more um, findable. Okay, so there we go three different arrays. We got the render textures, the sprites, and vectors of sorted nodes. Oh, I, I think these can be static. Everything else is going to break, of course. Okay, so textures used to be Uh, it used to be pairs, so these now can just be all the for loops for in i 
over the number of textures. So now this is kind of just better. Oh, something really important. These should be initialized to null. There we go. All right, so looping over the textures. And now instead of count, we can use I. All right, so copying that, we can loop over the other te the textures the same way. So if textures i, actually we can just go auto ref rt equals textures i. And then if rt equals null pointer, initialize and all that. And actually, we should assert that RT is not equal to null pointer here. So just fail. Unable to unlock render texture. That's probably not going to happen too often. But anyways, and that's only happening on my own private computer. So nothing to worry about there. Textures RT clear. That's we don't want to do that. We want to do text nodes I dot clear. So we'll also need to do this with sprites. It'll be almost the same thing. Whatever. It's less of a change if I do this. Okay, so there, it's created that. Now we'll create the sprites. Oh, we can do that later, actually. What's up, TK? How you doing, man? What's up? Sweet, my emotes are working today. For some reason, emotes weren't working the other day. It was weird. Okay, here's where it clears the existing textures. Oh, this is great. No longer paired out first. Now it's just textures. Whoops. Textures I. What game have you guys been playing? I've actually been playing Hollow Knight and it is so good. Oh my god, what a delightful game. Yeah, quick question. No, so this won't be a public tool. This is just a private in-house tool and it'll create some PDF maps for um, specific worlds. So I will be releasing one PDF map, sort of like Nintendo Power. It'll have things like all grayed out and it won't won't show you everything. But um, this will be released uh, with the game. So you, as part of the game, you'll get a PDF map of one world. And also there'll be another PDF map going out to backers of the project. That was promised. And then also there'll be some other maps that will be tailored for speedrunners. 
that'll have everything, all the items for certain worlds. And um, I'm thinking I'll some of the some of them will be kind of like um, publicly made available. Some of them will be sort of like secretly leaked, stuff like that. So this is just gonna be a totally in-house private tool. All right, so now we can clear the textures or the nodes. Text nodes I. Oh, and now textures, text zero and text one. Those are super easy to make. Yes, there will be. Yeah, there will be favorable seeds for speedrunning. Um, I've like I've been playing Wizard. This is actually this is the overworld map for Wizard, and Wizard is actually pretty good because you can get to level eight and pretty fast and get the the chip and the glove, and that this one could be and and it's actually pretty doable. You can actually beat level eight at I think a fairly low level of health. Tommy Killer, what's up, man? I'm remembering finally to use emotes. So yeah, oh, I was mentioning I've been playing Hollow Knight, and it is so good. It is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. Um, it's if you haven't seen it, it's a it's a platformer. It's a Metroidvania style platformer, and it's a really good game. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I'm good, man. I've been I'm having a really nice week of like not fixing bugs. It's been really great because um we kind of had to do a code freeze so that um so the double eleven can have time to just check out like um you know is the game ready? Is it can we release this? Because we're putting out a master candidate that goes to PlayStation and Xbox and all that. So they kind of had to have one week where I wasn't making a bunch of code edits all the time. And um, and I took this week to basically be working on this PDF map, and I started the soundtrack this week. So it's been a really creative week, and I've been playing a video game finally this week. It's like been such a good, like, refreshing week. I really needed this. I was almost starting to burn out from doing too many bugs. I mean, it was just like bugs, 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 bugs for the last two solid months, you know, of bug fixes. Nothing creative. Yeah, Tyrio. How do, how do you like Tyrio? Wizard's a pretty good one, but but that's only because I had the maps for it and everything. So, yeah, I think these maps will really help speedrunners as well as beginners. You been playing PUBG? Cool. Yeah, nice. Right on. World of Tanks. Sweet. Cool. Yeah, I think you were. Um, yeah, you were telling me about World of Tanks before. That's right. Cool. I'm glad to hear you're still enjoying that. Oh, it's not that good of an overworld. Hmm. But the dungeons are good. Cool. Nice. You've been working on a logo. Right on. Anything? Anything solid? What? What are you thinking? Yeah, with Overwatch too. Overwatch I hear is a good one. I haven't played Overwatch yet, but my computer really sucks for playing 3D games. So um I need to get it I need to like get a dedicated desktop computer for for like actual gaming. Because, like, even playing Hollow Knight, like, my computer is constantly with the fan on. And it really bugs me. I have to turn, you know, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm ruining the laptop from running the fan all the time. Because my last laptop, the fan died. It was super hard to fix. You're learning Illustrator? Cool. 
Nice, right on. Yeah. Cool. So you're in the ideas phase. Awesome. Actually, I might as well just make this auto ref RT equals textures I and nodes equals text nodes I. Keep that simple. Yeah, right. Oh, you're working on uh, Swarmonian? Sweet. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so cool. You're writing your own scripting language and everything. Yeah, Hollow Knight's awesome. I love Metroidvanias too. Right? They got so much right with, Ho with Hollow Knight. Oh my god, they're coming out with a DLC? No way. Oh, and cool, you're adding a new control scheme to Swarmonian? Yeah, the one the one thing I was going to complain about with Hollow Knight, but then I finally realized that it's kind of a genius move on their part, is that um, it makes you backtrack. You know, it puts the save points a little bit far away from some bosses, so it's really hard if you die on a boss, you have to go backtrack a while and, and repeat sections a lot. But then I finally realized that that really, like, it really makes me want to defeat bosses on the first try you know, or like defeat it makes me like it amps up my adrenaline like crazy when I'm fighting bosses with Hollow Knight because it's like oh my god if I die I have to go back and do all that over so it really makes me want to it really makes me want to succeed more I don't know it's kind of a it's kind of something I don't I don't like repeating sections because I hate doing things I've already done I'm like damn it I've already done this little section like 10 times trying to beat this boss but in the same time, it really makes me, I don't know, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Does, does it, when a game kind of punishes you by making you do things over that you've already done, is that cool or is that not cool? What are your thoughts? Okay, here we'll create sprites. You were coming with zero expectations? Yeah. Yeah, it did feel hard, right? Yeah, me too. And yeah, the map system's really hard too and you're always like, you don't know where you are until you get the map. Yeah, I know, really? That's like, that's kind of how I'm feeling now, too. I've endured through the hard parts, and I'm totally in love with this video game, Hollow Knight. It's like, I'm like, I almost feel like I, I respect it for making me work so hard sometimes as a gamer. It's like, god damn, I had to try that one boss so many times to beat her, but I finally did it, and it made me feel incredible when I overcame, you know? Sweet. Oh, you're you're switching up your control scheme. Uh-huh. Oh, and one key on the keyboard. Sweet, new particles. Right, you do get more efficient too, that's right. That's totally true. There was this one really hard section that I had to repeat so many times to fight this one boss, and I finally found some super efficient ways to get through it. I'm like, oh, if I just ignore these enemies and then I sneak around here to the left, I can get to the boss without losing any health, which was critical because it was really hurting my morale where I was like, damn it, every time I get to this boss, I'm already at half health. But once I got it more efficient, it really made it more smooth. Oh yeah, sorry. I used the wrong a word. I used the word backtracking, but I didn't really mean that. Backtracking, I love too. I like going back to areas and finding new stuff when I get new abilities. I love that. Yeah, I meant when you have to repeat a section to get to a boss over and over and over. Not not backtracking. Yeah, but backtracking. That's cool. That's a good point, right? Backtracking is fun when it's fast enough that you can get there. 
Yeah, I love the shortcuts. Oh yeah, you gotta stand up in six hours. All right, man. See you, Teeks. Later, man. That is really neat too. Oh my god. Yeah, the area has changed. The world is so alive. There's so many cool characters. Yeah, that's what I meant. Totally. When you respawn too far away from the boss, you're like, damn. I have to go through like three or four areas to get to, just to get back to the boss. But it makes you feel amazing when you overcome it. You're like, oh my God, I finally did it. I don't have to repeat that section anymore. My heart can start, stop beating so fast. Okay, so set the texture. The render texture to be invisible and then if the sprite let's just make it auto ref s equals text sprites i if s equals null pointer or is not equal to null pointer continue Yeah, I'm so torn. I'm so torn about this whole concept here. It's like, it's, you know, it, I was I was mad at Hollow Knight for a while. I'm like, damn it. Why do they always make it so difficult? But then when you overcome it, you feel amazing. So it's like, would I really, would I really want to deny myself feeling this great just because it was difficult? I don't know. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm still torn. I'm still, I don't even know how to, I don't even know how I feel about it. I haven't finished Hollow Knight yet, so I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, already it's like one of my favorite video games I've ever played. It's really good. What's up, Rune Word? It's going, going good, man. Just doing some code today, working on a PDF map generator. Yeah. It, whoa, it was two whole minutes? Dang. Yeah, we were just discussing how cert, so, some games, like, they'll make you repeat certain sections of gameplay before you can fight bosses again. And whether that's cool or not, and it's sort of a, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about it, but I think I'm on the side of the fence now. It's almost changed my mind playing Hollow Knight. It's like, it's changed my mind a little bit about how punishing a game should be. I don't know. So the sprite is going to be... Just to create the sprite here, assert that it's not equal to null. Yeah, right. It's it's almost annoying when it's too much, but like, yeah, me too, definitely love that game. And yeah, so apparently there's going to be a DLC now too. That's cool. I didn't know there's going to be a DLC. Yeah, right. It really sucks you in. It's so good. The whole world is like so neat. Everything everything is so alive. You can hit everything. You can There's so many cool secrets and every, there's so many creatures and I love it. Yeah, right? There's all the optional bosses, the challenges, the quests, the Colosseum thing, like... Right? Yeah, Metroid. Metroid's classic. So, S... In it with texture...
Right, the atmosphere, yeah. I know, right? It is kind of a disgusting place, but I'm I'm also similarly thrilled to explore it. Oh, you finished down well? Good job, dude. How did you do that? How did you beat down well? That is such a crazy It's a crazy hard game to beat. Puzzle agent? Yeah, the deep nest too. I have a I have a fear of spiders as well. And the deep nest was crazy going through it. But it also gave me that similar feeling of like, wow, I just overcame by exploring it all. I'm like, wow, I overcame my own fear in a video game again. Uh, sweet. I like this art style. Sweet. So it's a, is it an adventure? It looks like a nice ad adventure. Or maybe, is it not an adventure? Is this more like a simulation or something? Or they're just puzzles. You barely beat it, yeah? You started the final area with 10, you had 10 hearts? How did you even get 10 hearts? Damn. Oh, it is point and click adventure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Gosh, man. Dude, the atmosphere in that area is crazy. So we need a texture and the rectangle for it. Textures, uh, let's get the texture too. Oh, you had the knife and fork? Oh, nice. Knife and fork's great. What's up, Kobarney? Oh yeah, Abzu, I saw that. That's that swimming game, right? You're, you're like kind of like a mer person. I heard it was really great. Yeah, right. I haven't I haven't played that one, but I it's on my list. That's one of those games I need a better computer for. <laughs> I need I need to get a an actual dedicated gaming computer. So RT get texture. RT get texture rect and false. And now the sprite can set its Z order to the index so that they will draw the correct order. It's the whole point of doing this here. You got you just got a ten eighty nice. It was down sampled four K. Yeah. Oh man. Gosh, today's today's graphics cards and everything are so good. Oh, you can't get a texture wrecked. What is the texture? Oh, I gotta look this up. Oh, I can just open up um, render texture. How do you get it? width or whatever. Oh, you could do a new image. That's cool. Oh, 
Oh, it has a sprite already. Oh. Well, that explains it. So the render texture, it doesn't matter what its global Z order is set to. Oh, man. Okay, well, that simplifies things. I don't need to create any tech, any... I don't, need, I don't even need to do this. I just need to do... I don't even need to do that. Shoot. All we need to do... is say... RT... get sprite... and then... Uh, set global Z order on the sprite and that ought to draw them in order okay so I can get rid of if this works and I can get rid of the sprites separate sprites uh, okay so still a few problems oh second of course what are these other ones um, use of pair where was that at Two, 2372 well we're not paired up first that's textures I. Oops, what did I just do? Ah! Count. We don't need count. Um, RT 2399. Oh. All right, uh, what next? Remember name second, 2453. Oh, okay, okay, that's just gonna be nodes. Or text nodes. Text nodes, I got pushed back. Oh no, that's text nodes. Zero and this is text nodes one. There. One sec. What's up, man? You bought squids from space? Cool. Crash Bandicoot remastered. Squids from space, huh? I haven't heard of this one. Whoa. So it's multiplayer, huh? Oh, yay, it finally compiled. All right, so let's see if this works. Um, it should basically draw them in the correct order. That's all. It should draw the ground first, and then the areas, and then the items. Oh, it crashed. What did I do? Oh, it's in the save to file? Why would that have done save to file so quickly? Uh, ah. Might need Xcode for debugging. Um. It must be how I created, oh, wait, it's when it, oh, 
Oh. Need this. Last pause has got to be valid. And we'll put a little protection. If textures i equals null pointer, then just bail from this iteration. <laughs> yeah. I didn't send that to Apple. Apple's going to help me fix Songbringer. You're like, yeah. Oh. Thanks, Apple. Thanks for helping me fix my game. This one little tool part of my game. Thanks. Thanks for helping me out. All right. There's a crazy hiccup there, but it did render. It is rendering. It's rendering, I think, in the right order. I guess I might have to run this a couple times to see if it's really working. But okay, so if this is all good, then I'll move to the next step and that is gonna be making all the little icons, the um, uh, the sprites, all the sprite icons, the, the items and the, the numbers of the levels and stuff like that. I'll make those a, another render texture so that also gets rendered to disk. So what's happening here is just rendering all the ground and rendering, putting that as part of a render texture, rendering that to disk, and then it's also putting everything at, in all, all the stuff on top of the ground goes in its own render texture, which gets rendered to disk. And what it was doing right there where it slowed down for a long time was actually just re rendering that giant ping image to disk, which is like 6,000 pixels wide, so that's why it takes it quite a while. But it's producing these outputted layers here so there's like that layer of ground and then this layer goes on top of the ground and then here's level one's ground there's nothing there and then here's level one's areas so yeah the next step is to do one more layer where it's got all the items and other goodies <laughs> okay so let's kick off. We don't need the sprites map or hey. We don't need these text sprites anymore. I'm so glad this worked. Wait, I did not really verify that it did work. I gotta run this at least a few times. Thank you, the confident gamer. Okay, I'm gonna run this like three to five times and just see if it me ever messes up the, the Z order. I don't think it will now that we're actually setting the sprites Z order thing. So that's working this time. I'm gonna run it a few more times. It's working that time. All right, it does appear to be working. One more time. It's such a random bug. Like sometimes it would draw on top, sometimes it wouldn't. I think it was just because it had they both had the exact same Z order. Because I didn't know that it was the renders rights. Okay, cool. Good. Okay, this is good enough to check in this little bit so far. So I added a sorted node class to Kit, so I can share that as well. So I can sort nodes if I want for other other functions, other classes. I started making this a namespace and moved all the textures into that namespace. Make it really simplifies the whole the all the textures that way. Very 
things that are still black? Are they going to be transparent in the PDF? I think they'll be just kind of like grayed out or, or, yeah, or just black or white or something like that just to show that there's something there, but this particular map doesn't have everything on it. This might even be part, I could put this up in the other code, but I already did this and I already tested this, so I'm going to check it in as it is. And I'm not really documenting this in the Git, I'm just like throwing it up with those kind of comments. Because it's just a private local tool in-house. Okay, so next step. I need three textures. And I might as well do this right too. So enum. Text ground. Text. Above ground. Shoot, I don't know. text, um, labels, I guess, and then k num textures. Actually, we should just, yeah, yeah, that's fine, whatever. Okay, so all uses of n textures need to become k num textures. All right, and now that we have num textures, that does not work. Okay, now we have num textures. We can. Well, I already did. I did ktex labels. Okay, so we got one for the labels. So now the label functions, the label does this thing where it, um, where it's got its own function where it renders items and stuff. So the render items function needs to get worked into the render area thing so that it can put it everything into just the the render texture. Um. Okay. So render items. Hmm. I'm kind of like debating whether I should put this all in that function or whether I should leave it as this separate function. But it's only, uh, it would have to, I guess you could pass it a render texture. Oh, this also passes in AW and AH. Yeah, I guess this should be its, just keep this as its own function. So we got render area. What?
under items. So this is going to become a render texture. So I need to kind of rework this function so it can draw to a render texture. And size x, size y, a, w, a, h, z order. I think those could be just made into an offsets. Oh, you know what? Who cares? I can just leave those variables as they are. I don't need to do this. So I'll make this a render texture. I guess we should get a, a reference to the nodes to be working with. It'd be nice to have these as separate methods actually to say like static void get I guess this could be mapper void get items for a certain point Now we can get the area. I think we need the exit area as well. Do I need these beyond this function though? No. I guess I don't. Alright, so we got the area, the exit area, and we can list all the items. Alright, now each one of these 
is going to get, like this label, for example, is going to get created and then pushed into the nodes. Oh, push back a sorted node of uh, reference to L, or I mean an address of L. Z, um, this is going, this is the number, what is this? This is the number of the dungeon. And underneath it is what goes, okay, so this one is zero. So I'm pushing everything back into nodes so they can be sorted and then drawn into the render texture in the correct order. This goes at negative one, the pixel underneath it. This is the sprite for the item, so this needs to be at zero. And then the other one goes Oh, we don't even need the render texture. I guess it can be it really does not need to be a child of well I guess it could be the child of that render texture whatever so we won't need a node to hold items anymore All right, now we've created the render textures, we've cleared them. Okay, now this is the point where we've filled the nodes for, um, this should be now K text ground, and this one should be K text above ground, and then this one is going to be fill the items nodes. I guess, it, yeah, we can use the parent as to be the render texture. I don't remember everything else that goes for this, though. Pause, size X, blah. Oh, my God. Pause is, I think, the same variable. Oh, it's just P. All right, never mind. Oh, God. Size X is just size X. Area width is design res X.
And then Z order. Oh, uh, I don't know. Let's try one for now. Okay, Let's take a quick break. I'll be right back. Items node. Forgot about items node. Today, where is this? Ah, there. Clear the items nodes. Cool. We don't need that. Um, there's probably a couple other errors I missed. Yep. All right. What did I do? A lot of them. <laughs> Unidentified P eighteen eighty seven. This is pause. Is entrance. Ah.
kind of duplicating code there, but I don't really care about changing the method signature at this point. Oh, there's still others. N1897. Let's just pause that Z. No, no, that's the entrance number. Oh, I guess it could return account and then it won't have to duplicate the that check about his entrance. Area. Uh, uh, area is there. Oh, area was not at the bottom. Okay. Need to refresh these errors. Hmm. Okay. So what I'm working on right now is uh, this map generator, and I'm, it's got different layers. There's a ground layer. There's an above ground layer, and then there's a layer for labels. I'm working on the layer for labels right now, so it renders all the items and stuff to a render texture so that render texture can get saved to disk once it's all done. Oh. In 1927, I guess we can just get the area and the entrance. Uh, I need all this stuff. Okay, so this function all it's doing is pushing back a bunch of nodes like 
the sprites for the items and stuff into these other this array of nodes that can get rendered items uh, we need an items array Ah, okay, that's supposed to be K text labels. If that's even needed anymore. And I also need to clear. Clear the nodes. Move from its parent and then just re clear all the clear all the pointers. Okay, that should do the cleanup work. So it can create all those nodes, render them to the render texture, release all those nodes. Hopefully it puts them all in the right order. Oh, it's a sorted node. So it is uh, n dot node. Space my name. What's up, man? Everything is going quite well. How about you? Yes, finally we got we got it compiling and linking. Let's see how this goes. So we should have. We'll let it render the whole overworld if this is even working and not crashing. And see if it renders that third one to disk. Okay. Uh, it's not rendering them. Either that or they're... Oh, they might be way up. Oh, they might be there, but just like... I see some tiny, tiny pixels up in the top right there. That might be where it's putting them. So they just might be invisible. Because they're too tiny, tiny. And they might be offset wrong. Let's find out. Right, so they're at... Where are they? Oh, there's a whole overall offset. Don't think that's needed anymore. And then the next thing, it needs a drama at the right scale. I think they were there, but they were just super tiny. So let's do a float scale on top of everything here. And make them, I don't know, I'm just going to guess here at first. Let's make them eight times as big. So set scale, 0.5 times scale. Nice, you're getting an overall out by October? 
Congratulations. That's great to hear, man. That sounds like a lot of work. Pretty big, huh? It's finished. Come on, show me the items. Nice, there's items now. It looks like they need to be scale 16. All right, now let's just let this all render and we'll see if it gets rendered to disk when it's done. At least the icons for the items are on top of everything. We just need to get them so they're at the right size. I think 16 scale will work because everything else is a 16th. It's being scaled down by that much just to draw on this, this screen. Okay, it should take a second to render. And then as soon as it starts to draw the next Z level, I can quit and see if it worked. Okay, it took a second, but it did finish. Yeah, it worked. Sweet. Okay, so now we've got this bottom layer, which is the ground. The next layer is everything above ground, all this stuff. And the next layer is the items. They're there. It's working. A ton of new stuff, yeah? Yeah, this could be wallpapers too. Man, I am low on hard drive space. <laughs> I can't believe I do what I do on a 256 gig hard drive. I've got three, three separate OS's on here, and then I've got three, two virtual machines in my Mac OS. So like, I'm just using so much hard drive space for other OS's. Okay, let's go to scale 16. And something was up with the labels, but let's figure out why. Oh, 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 it's just P. Oh, P needs to be, this needs to be time scale when it's adding stuff to its position. I think that needs to be time scale there. And. That's it. No, no, nothing else. I mean, I've got a, I got an external hard drive for backing up, but yeah, 256 gigs. It's a solid state drive, which is really nice. But that was really expensive in 2013 just to get a 256. But now it's 2017. I bet you this, the prices for solid state drives are a lot better. I haven't looked though. In general, my laptop's getting a little out of data here, but it did help me make all of Songbringer. I'm kind of attached to this laptop. Okay, so it's not, oh, it's not doing the, it's drawing the icons on top of each other, which means that it's not using, the offset per must need to be scaled as well. So we'll put the scale on top, and the offset per is five times scale, and five times, two times scale, or whatever.
90 bucks. <laughs> wow, I haven't looked at the prices at all in a while, but man, that's, dude, that's a good price for a solid state. When I first got my solid state drive in 2013, I was like, wow, I'm one of the precious few people that has a solid state, completely solid state drive. But now they're just commonplace. Huh? Yay, look at this. The icons are all drawn correctly now. Let's let this all render out and I'll take a look at the, the finished output. There's of course still some bugs. Like for example, it's pretty obvious. You can see the lily pads aren't really rendering perfectly. But having all these in three separate rendered textures is um, a huge step towards finishing the PDF. This is almost finished now at this point, the PDF map generator thing. Just to, all I gotta do is finish up a couple bugs and it's good to go. I'll need to do some like some, you know, spiffing up the whole document and putting it as part of a PDF document and maybe creating a little bit of custom art for that. That's no biggie. All right, let's check these out. I'm gonna throw them together in the same layer or in the same file. So I'll take all these for the overworld. All right, we'll take layer one, paste it on top. And then this layer. I really got to get these um, rendered to the center so I can more easily do this. Well, there you go. Look at that. All This is all now as layers in a PSD document so I can turn off and turn back on stuff and really make this a nice um, PDF map output. Or a bitmap. This could just be a simple bitmap uploaded online, a ping or a JPEG or something like that. This is quite a large document. This is 6,720 pixels by 3,840 because everything is actually rendered at the actual scale in the game. So this is this is what the game actually is. This is what it's drawing at when you're playing Songbringer. It's playing at about 400 by 200. So this is all. That's, every one of these areas is drawn to scale. Um, so cool. I'm I'm pretty much done with the stream here. I'm just like uh, gonna check this in, but the next step to work on is working on figuring out like how do I get these lily pads to draw correctly. Something's going on there. I think it's actually. Oh, I just realized what is happening. It's it's drawing the the area on top first, and then it goes and it draws this bottom layer, which is getting which is overriding the lily pads because the water the water itself needs to be part of the ground layer. So all I gotta do is move this this water to the ground, and I think that'll draw correctly. And this, I don't know what's going on with this one little pixel of green right there, but I think that might be related too. So this is exciting. I really like having these these maps. Um Yeah, I don't really got anything else to say about it right now. Other than it's really close to being finished. I'm excited about this. I've been kind of working on this kind of slowly off and on this week. And it's nice to see this little project come to a completion. So I can now have this private in-house tool to generate maps of worlds and selectively share ones. You know, if a world becomes really hot and people are running, speed running it a lot, I can make a map and share that with people. Or if I can seed, I can seed speed runners with a map of one world where they're like, okay, cool, I got the map of this world. I can plan out my routes for speed running. Some speedrunners won't even want you to give them a map anyway, so they can just they can play whatever world they want to. And I'm sure there's some worlds that are going to be way faster than others. So, yeah. So that's it for this stream. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Have a great Sunday. Hope you're all enjoying yourselves or something. And uh, we'll check you all out next time. Uh, no, so this players will not be able to make this. This is going to be a private in-house tool. 
um, so that I can just selectively choose which worlds to create these for. If people want, if people want a, a map of one world, I'm not opposed to that, but it probably have to be kind of like a community thing. Like a lot of people will probably have to ask for a world for me to actually make it. Because I already promised the Kickstarter backers they're getting a world. So there'll be a PDF map going out to Kickstarter backers. And they'll be like, yeah, I'll just be selective about it. Um, and this is this is already kind of its own thing. This is a lot of code. So it's not this is not getting built into the Songbringer EXE but it is using it in my debug environment. So this is a debug only code, basically. All right, well, have a good Sunday. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time.